we've put 37 years on the board, yes. And, and, you know, she's, she's got a lot of uh, awards from Century 21. And Ken, I want to thank you for taking the time to be here this morning. Thank you, it's been a, It's been a pleasure nice, nice. having you in the background when I had your wife up here and I was talking with her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Where were you born, Ken? I was born in Toronto. In Toronto. Did you live there most of your life? No. Oh, you, no. Oh, you uh, say that like as if, ooh, that'd be a no, curse. No, I grew up in Montreal. I, uh, eight years old. Uh, my, I'm French, my father's French-Canadian. Okay. Uh, so he, he was, and he was transferred to uh, uh, the plant in... Uh, in Montreal. So at eight years old, we moved to Montreal. I'd been an Anglais in, in, in Toronto, but I've been... Are you the only child? No. Okay, how many no. How many are you? I, I'm, I'm one of six. And which number are you? Five. You, so you have one below you and four above, above yes. you. Yes, yes. Tell me what they are from the top. Boy, girl, what? Boy, girl, girl, boy, boy, boy. So only two girls and four boys. Yes. Are you guys close? Um, yes and no. Okay. <laughs> some, of, some of us are close, some of us not so close. <laughs> are, they all, are they all still living and doing well? No, my younger brother passed away about three or four years ago. Okay. So what about your mom and dad? My mom and dad also, also passed away. Uh, uh, you know, I, I, I was fifth, so, you know, I mean, yes, they passed away uh, 15, 20 years ago. Okay. So quite a while ago. Okay. All right. So what was it like growing up in Canada? Where did you grow up mostly? Well, I grew up half in, I mean, how, how, how long is growing up? I mean, okay, I, well, good. I grew I mean, up, to the age of eight, I was in Toronto. Okay. And from yeah. then on, it was in Montreal. Until so I, tell me about Toronto. Until I finished. Growing up in Toronto, what was it like for you? Were you more academic or more sports-minded in school? Uh, more, more academic, I guess. I was, uh, I was, uh, uh, what? Well, I, I skipped a grade when I was in, you know, in, I skipped grade two. <laughs> wait, 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 now wait. First of all, first of all, wait. You had mm. two sisters above you. Yes. And they were close to you too, because it was two boys. Well, what was it? What was it? They were close to me when we were young. That's what I mean. I know that. I know that. But they kind of raised you. My sister. How many years difference? How many years difference between you and your sisters? Uh, seven and and ten. That's what or I'm nine. saying. Or nine. Seven See? and nine. So I mean, they had to help with you. Yes. When you were small. Well, yeah. So I know that. But they it also to. created a lot of friction too. <laughs> I, I imagine mean, you know, so. You have, you have extra mothers kind of running around. and Of you course. Know, and you'd and say, you're not my mother. Exactly. Say, okay, but I'm stronger than you. <laughs> 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 watch, watch and see if you don't do what I say to yeah. do. <laughs> yes, but then, but then she, one, one of my sisters, the one who was the, the one who was the biggest pain, went off okay. to the convent, right? She became a nun that when I was when I when she was eighteen and I was what eleven. Really? One of the happiest days of my life. <laughs> we get along very well now. Okay, wait. we get along very well now. We did not get along when I was eleven. Uh, <laughs> did you speak English or French at home? English. You said your father was My French. mom was Polish. Well, that doesn't mean that you didn't. And we grew up in Toronto. Okay. And my mom was Polish. Okay. So, so they spoke English. So we spoke it. My father spoke so French, but his but he was he was more uh, yeah, he was more <laughs> fluent in in English than French. Were you close to mom and dad? Yes. Yes. Especially right. my but closer to my mom. Okay. Right. So you said you were more you thought more academic. So why you like to read a lot or you were just more of a homebody? I was not a sports guy. But but, but uh, you're tall. I was little. I was, I was, because I graduated, I was, I got graduated, I skipped a grade in two, right? Ooh, that's so nice. then we went to Montreal, and I, I was like, and, you know, and, we start, and I, I kind of picked things up, you know, uh, but, but I didn't, but, and they didn't put me back down again, but I was two or three years younger than everybody that's in my That's not good. That's not good for a boy, I think. And, and so in grade nine, I was the smallest kid. I remember a picture where I was the smallest kid in the class, yeah, yeah. smallest boy. Yeah. In the class. And not to mention your emotional growth, the fact you were less mature because you were only you were two years younger than everybody. Well, that I makes a big difference. I was then. reasonably mature because I had my older brothers and sisters. Older sisters. That's true. So right. they were beating up on you all the time. Right. You knew. Right, right, right. You knew it was all the time. <laughs> 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 it wasn't right. new to you right. to be picked on. Right. You but, had to but, yourself. But and you had someone you had backup too, because they would help back you all went to the same school, didn't you? Not in Montreal. Everything broke up after went in Toronto, yes, but not in Montreal. For the first eight years, you had your brothers and sisters together. Yes. Then, as soon as you left there, well, the other, the older ones stayed in in, in Toronto for a, for a couple of years. They never really made the transition to Montreal. What, what okay, they came for a year or two, and then they went back. Uh, then they were starting university, and they went and they went back to uh, to Toronto or to, okay. to, you know to go to university or do that kind of thing. Um, but I was still young. 
Yes. And so I, you know, I did high school. And you have one younger brother. I have one younger brother, seven years younger. You, have, they, you guys were really spaced out. We were spaced out. What kind of work did your father do? Uh, well, he, he drove a truck. He was a bread he was a bread salesman when I was. When, yeah, but then they, he made the transition into into management. Okay. And then when he was, uh, I mean, when he was transferred to Montreal, you know, we had a color TV and we had a you know. Oh. <laughs> We had a house in the suburbs. You know, we had a house in the suburbs. Mom got, stayed home and took care of the kids. My mom stayed home and took care it, of the kids. English speaking, no car, no driver's license. In in Ville d'Anjou, in, in in East End, Montreal. Uh, you know, this is the business I'm in now. You know, helping for ex expats. You know, assimilate and get get used to. My mom had no help. No. Right? Nothing. I just. Uh, she was. Uh, you know. She was a strong woman. She was a very strong woman. She was very pretty and everything, but she was also a very strong woman. I, 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 I feel for her now like I never felt for... Because uh, you understand now. No. I didn't, didn't understand what she was... What, what, you know. No, I said you understand now. Oh, yeah. That's why you feel more for oh, her yeah. now. But then you didn't know. No. Just, that was just life for that you. That was just life, you know. Yeah. Now, you know, and she had like three of us around. Or, you know, I mean, there were, there, were, there were children around to, to kind of keep her busy, but uh, she was kind of isolated out there. I think yeah, so. yeah, we, you know, my dad. Did, do, do I mean, all the does. English, in, oh, not all the English, but a lot of the English in Montreal live in the West End. We lived in the East End, <laughs> okay. <All right. laughs> where the factory was. Okay. <laughs> um, but anyway. So tell me, what were your interests when you got into high school? What kind of you didn't do sports? I was still a nerd. Yeah, you were into sports. Yeah, so you my, were kids, in my kids made fun of me. I, you know, I was in the film club and stuff like that. Oh, so that. you liked I, the film? You I, I did. I, you know, I studied Latin. Well, I was in a Catholic school. I mean, we, we were. I, oh, I, I came out to school. No. It was co-ed? It was co-ed. That's not usual for Catholic school. Usually it's all boys or all girls. Not in, not in Canada. Okay. Not in Canada. I mean, there are those in but Canada, but the, the public, but the Canadian, the Catholic public school system right. is, is both. It's public. Is, is it's both. Yeah, I know, because I went to St. Agnes and that was both. That was co-ed. Okay. But you, sometimes you have the ones like St. Mary's and Sacred Hearts, which are boy or yes, girl. Yes, 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 yes. Those yes, are boy yeah, or yeah, girl. Like, yeah. That's right. But that so they're known for that. Did you have to wear a uniform? No. No uniform at no St. Uniform. Agnes, too. I went to St. Agnes, and there was no uniform. I only went there for a year. None of the schools were called Saint, by the way. The, what were they called? Oh, they were named after, after, uh, after, after French guys. Uh, French I, guys? You know, they weren't saints? No, they weren't saints. You know, one was named after a prime minister. One was named after... Okay. Uh, you know, but they were, I was moved around because we were, because it was a new neighborhood. It was growing. Montreal was growing then. Uh, this is before, uh, you know, 19, before the FLQ came around, if you know what the FLQ. No, was the, 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 uh, it was a, a, a terrorist organization in the, in, the, in the mid to late 60s. Um, that kind of thing, which hurt, which hurt Montreal's. Uh, but the terrorist over what? What was, what was their... Oh, they killed a couple of people. I know, but what were they? What was their purpose? What were they? Oh, to 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 to, to make Quebec independent. All French. Yes, independent. Okay. Independent. Okay. To make it to make uh, by 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 terror. Right. To I make Quebec okay. uh, an independent country. Okay. Right. Separate from Canada. Separate from Canada. I see. That's that was you know, and they and not they but you know the, the separatist movement became came very very close. Okay. Uh, you know, it was like 0.1% in, 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 in the last election. When was that? Early 70s? Late, late 60s, early 70s? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, like, it was like 0.1% we to stay in Canada. Yeah. So what, it was what year was this? In the late 70s? I think it was, I think it was early 70s. Yeah, I'm not exactly okay. sure. Yeah. Actually, <laughs> forgive uh <-huh>. me. <laughs> so when you went to college, what did you go to study when you went into college? Did you ha already have ideas to which you really I studied. Most? I studied a lot of Asian history. Chinese and Japanese. What made you decide to do that? I had designs on going farther in, in terms of education, which didn't really pan out, but I had designs on because I wasn't a very good student. <laughs> I thought that it would be easier for me to get a job in a field where nobody was working very much, though, that there weren't very many positions of, of, of teachers in Asian studies in major universities. So I thought, oh, maybe I'll, ha maybe I'll have, you know. I was, I was at the end of the boom, right? All right, 53. Right. Or no, actually, you're the boom went into sixty. No, you're still a baby. Well, yeah, a middle boom, but, but but there was a yeah, lot of boomers boom. before me. Oh, that's for sure. That was in the forties, of course. You know, in the forties, that's when the baby boom oh, started. 45. Right after the war. After yeah, the war, so there yeah. was a lot of boomers before right. me. So so you know, uh, the, the the workplace environment was not exactly healthy. Um, so uh, that's one of the things that was one of the considerations of of my education was perhaps so I and 
and it, and it, was, it was different, it was interesting. I, you know, I, McGill had a, had, had a strong uh, Asian studies pro history. They had, a, they had a, you know, a couple of, uh, a couple of uh, interesting Chinese history professors, you know, very, very left wing. Did you do any Chinese? I mean, any Japanese, I mean? I th no, they didn't have Japanese, they had Chinese. So I studied Chinese? I studied Chinese at McGill. Okay. Right? And, uh, but, uh, you know, with, again, with the idea of eventually, that was, my, that was my language credit. Okay, is that what you graduated with? A degree in? In, in history. Asian, in history. Not, hi not Asian not history, history, it was history. just a, a degree in history. In history, okay. Yeah. So what did you do once you graduated? Did you go back home? I was 21 when I graduated. Okay. Okay. Very young. Very young. Uh, I, I ended up in my parents' home. They'd moved back to Toronto by this time, looking for a job, and I, I got a, I got, you know, a, answered a little ad in the Toronto Star, you know, go to Japan, teach English. And I got one. I got one of the jobs. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So at the age of 21, I'm in Tokyo. All right. Where? Uh, Where? Koenji. Koenji. Well, right. I was teaching in Koenji. Okay. Right. Teaching what? Uh, English. Okay. Well, you know. Okay. As much as a 21-year-old would teach, I mean, you know, you're, they call it an English training club. So you're more you're tra you're training, you're teaching, you're you know, you're just having fun mostly. I right. think you know, I just you know. So how long did that last? Well, I, I I taught on and off for the next five six years. I mean, so I taught for a couple of years there. I, I, and then I, I for a year in Koenji, and then then I started doing Berlitz, and I I worked at Berlitz, and then I went and then I, I went back to Canada to get a, a, a master's in in planning urban planning, urban and regional planning. Now, what was the thought behind that? My grades were simply not good enough for me to get into a, 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 a PhD program or that kind of program in, in Asian history. Okay. It was not, I, 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 was, I was smart enough to realize that that, that, that wasn't going to happen. Okay. I'll, I'll, uh, and, and I figured, you know, this would be more practical. I could get to work in a planning department somewhere, or do that something like that would happen, and, you know, in the... You know, it, it was more employment oriented, say, okay. than, not, uh, than a PhD in history would be, you know, because then you're kind of hoping to get a, 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 you know, a, a position in a university and that. But, um, so anyway, that's, so that's, that's why I went into planning and uh, this was in Vancouver, right? I went, to U I went to the University of British Columbia and then... Uh, Is that over a one year, two year period? It took me three years. Okay, so you stayed in... Because I had to do there. a makeup year All right. to get my grades up. Okay. Right. And they get, all a, the get, a here. get a statistics right. and an economic. The degree took me two more years. And then, then, I, then I was on the job market. I got a job, not in urban planning, but market planning okay. <laughs> right. for the forest industry, for a large British Columbia uh, lumber, plywood export, exporter, shipper. Okay. They had ships. And within a year, uh, a job had opened up in Japan. And I spoke Japanese, you know, enough to fool them. <laughs> <laughs> that I spoke to. That I joked. No, this is in Vancouver. In Vancouver, okay. I, in I, Vancouver, okay. okay they, had a, I, they had a young woman, you know, come to check me out, see if I spoke Japanese. I could talk to young women, <laughs> carry on a conversation weird. like that. Right. You know, but, you know, it was very it was kind of different if you're doing business. business right. Japanese, yeah, there's a big but, difference. But, you know, but anyway, I got the job. It was a really good job, really well paying job. And I was, uh, and I was back here, uh, you know, 28 years old, 29, come on. Doing what? Again, a planning position, but it was uh, but it, but it was exploring the market for plywood products okay. in, uh, in in to in Japan, mm -hmm. <coughs> and I would travel all around the country, taking giving people plywood and testing it to see how they would use it and that kind of thing. How long did that last? It was a one year contract, and I couldn't find anything, and so I got you know the one year was just kind of like the end of it. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> but, I, but so, okay. it gave me the money. I only I, I saved half my money. Right, so I so when when a few years later, when the real estate thing happened, you know, I was in, I was working for the Boston Consulting Group. I kind of was a stringer, you know, like a you know a local hire kind of guy, and, and it wasn't you know I was I wasn't a Harvard educated I you know, Wharton I wasn't one of those. So so I, so anyway, I uh, uh, but I had a, but I had a partner in my in a small office who uh, who's, uh, who wanted to do real estate. And we got, he, he threw some Century 21 pamphlets on my desk one day. And I said, okay, you know, I didn't, I didn't have a lot better, you know. And I had a little bit of money saved up, so there was some money to throw into the, into the, into the works as well. And, uh, you know, and then, uh, you know, I, I, I'd met Nordico by that time, so I had, you know, and she was, and she was, you know, she was uh, working for almost nothing in, in Takashi Maya. <laughs> you know, and the fashion, she, was, she was doing what she wanted in the fashion department, which the pay was dirt. So, uh, you know, so, but anyway, 
Um, so she came and worked with us. She was a fabulous uh, salesperson, really, you know, and, and, and really helped make the whole thing work. Oh, wow. So how long have you been with Century 21 now? 86. So, uh, oh, that'd be 36 years then. 36 years. 37, going on 37. 37. Now. Wow. 37 years. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. Yeah. You have to be the, are you the longest running Century no. 21? No, there were 30. You? There were 30. Because I remember when they came in. There were 30 when, there were 30 franchises when we joined. Okay. And there are 800 and 900 now uh -huh. in, in Japan. Uh, that would kind of go up and down, but. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we're one franchise. I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not the monolith of Century 21, right? I'm just, just one franchise. Right. And our, and our, and our, pla and our, 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 our approach was always to go after the, the, the high-end expat leasing market in central Tokyo. Right. You know. You've done a great job doing it, too. Well, thanks to Nordico <laughs> and, you know, that's a, a very dedicated staff. Yeah, we did, we did, right. we, you know, we, we put 37 years on the board, yes. And, that's and right. you know, she's, she's got a lot of uh, awards from Century 21 and, you know, for over the years. And uh, do, you see, do you see yourself continuing on with Century 21 for the foreseeable future? Well, she wants to. So what am I going to do? What she says to do? Yeah. <laughs> 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 and more or less, you know, you know. And we've also got we've also got the orientation company, which is which is Tokyo Orientations. Okay. So so Tokyo Orientations also helps bring some clients to to Century Twenty One as but well. What's the purpose of, of, of Tokyo Orientations? So or, Tokyo Orientations <coughs> uh, helps. Mm -hmm. uh, we have contracts with with various relocation management companies. Companies you probably never heard of, like like Cardis or. Plus, or this, and, they, and these and, and these companies have contracts with a Citibank or or or, or Dell or Google, right? and, and and they so so when somebody from uh, say from a, so a company they have a contract with is transferred to Tokyo, we take Tokyo Orientations takes care of them. Right, and right. tells and they, them they that. find them. They find them. Uh, you know, the, uh, places to. You know, uh, you know, take take care of. The, explain the neighborhoods. Show them how to how to get around. That kind of thing. Get them. Get them. Uh, you know, their residence card. Their, their you know, their bank account. Their mm -hmm. the phone. That kind of right. thing. Right. And then, um, and also, you know, Century Twenty One helps with housing. Wow. So it kind of works cool. together. Not all the time, but it's yeah. sometimes. Because yeah. I remember, I came, you may not remember this, but you invited me to your home when you lived right across the street, not too far from um, Red Cross Hospital. You lived a right. little bit down and down right. the street, and you had a house on the side, right. and we went into it, and I think you guys own the home. Yeah. Or something, you own the home. Still do. Oh, it's still there? Oh, yeah. Okay. So we came there, you invited my <laughs> wife and I and a couple other couples there, because I have pictures from them, and that's when we first really met. We talked to you then, mm -hmm. going through your time you have a good memory. Oh. Yeah, I remember that. And I remember your daughters being very young coming in and doing something, showing us a dance or something. Oh, they came in. oh right. Yeah, yeah. Those yeah. days. They had, but they didn't show it. I think it was already, they had done something on TV. So we saw it. Because your, your daughters had been modeling or doing something on TV when they were young. Okay. They were only in their... Let's see, I would say 12, 13 years old or something. It was too That's old. Well, your oldest they, has they to be. They were that young. They, they hadn't gone into it yet. They, went, they generally started. Sarah, Sarah was young. She was like 13, okay. I think, when she started. But they were about uh, 14. Maybe, maybe so. Yeah, yeah. 13. 14. She was 14 when she did uh, the, uh, da -da -da -da, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the the wedding. She was in full wedding regalia. <laughs> and she was 14? 14 years old. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Doing a, a, a commercial for what was that? What was it? You know, uh, a magazine for wedding halls. Okay. Uh, recruit. Okay. And it was a, a big TV ad. Anyway, that's, oh, that's, that's, that's one of the. Anyway. That's beautiful. That's All right, Kim, that's fantastic. Listen, <laughs> before I end the podcast. Oh, this is over. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you had something else. No. You have something good. That's fine. You want to tell me that's about fine. some some adventures you've been on that you did you travel a lot when you came to Japan? Did you start to go other well, places? She likes to travel. The wife likes to travel. Where? Oh, well, we've been all over the way, all, all over Europe and Southeast Asia, and right. you know, of course we go to Canada and the States, but you know, but, but, but you know, we we we. Where are some of the favorite spots for you? Italy, I can go anywhere. I can eat anything. Uh, she's a little bit more of a problem in that regard. So so we often end up going Italy because it's Italian or Portugal because you know seafood countries and. Uh, uh, and you know we, we well I, like we've been all over Italy on uh, half a dozen, I've been in Rome half uh, seven eight ten times uh, something um, well you always fly into Rome and go around 
And, but we've been to Croatia a few times. We've been to you know, Montenegro. We've been to Greece several times. I know uh, um, out in the islands there. Not, not just Mykonos and uh, Santorini, but... Uh, the but, other uh, islands. Yeah, yeah, the others. Um, and, you know, so we've, been, we've, been, we've done a lot of travel. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. And with, with all the family. That's right. That's right, when they were young, yeah. No. Even now? Even now. Okay. Even now. They all come. When you guys say you're we going were, We to were in Morocco three weeks ago. Whole, every, everybody's in Morocco. They're all in Portugal. Uh, we, we came back through Portugal. Yeah, you know, everybody, yeah the whole... Uh, That's nice. They all look forward to it. Yeah, everybody's... <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> That's like us, too. We like to keep with the kids and everyone together. We have more together. We don't have any grandkids yet, but you have three. I have two. I thought it was three. Two. Two. There was two. The two you, you, Ian. I'm sorry. All right. Two grandchildren, that's right. Okay. Oh, that's beautiful. Ken, before I end the podcast, it's a question I like to ask. With all the knowledge you have, with all your 70 years, you just recently turned 70 years old, yeah. that you've had on this planet, if you could go back in time and talk to the young Kenneth, what advice would you give him and how would that Kenneth be? You had a chance that's to a, that's a, that's a, I know, I know. Hard question to answer because, you know, I mean, you know, there are certain things that happen to you that are just pure luck. You know, and, and, and if you were to plan it, it probably wouldn't happen. You know, I mean, I would have to say it, that's really hard to decide because it, it, once you start messing around with, with something, then would that luck have happened? You know, would, would that, which, which really had an impact on me. I'm sorry, I, I don't think I could really go back at any particular time and change much because I'd have, I, you know, you've, you know, you've seen these movies, right? You go so back there, right. you know. You change everything and all of a sudden. And they say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. You know? the twi- we, we grew up with the you Twilight create Zone. Biff. The Twilight Zone, right? <laughs> Right. No, yeah. <laughs> Basically, you like where you are right now. I've you know, been pretty lucky. Time. There you go. Yeah. That's good. Well, I can't say more. Thank you so thank much, Ken. <laughs> I want to thank all of you for watching this podcast. Make sure you press like and subscribe. And never forget, it's all unknown, so continue to reach for the star. Because you're too blessed to be stressed. <laughs>